Howdy folks, I'm back. <clears throat> yep, I'm back. Thought I forgot about you, huh? I didn't. So those that are watching the replay, definitely, this is a continuation of our series that we had um, at the end of the year. So this is a continuation. I'm going to explain what, why there was a gap. Many of you already know. But go ahead, add into the comments below anything that you would spark some ins inspiration. If you have any questions, um, <clears throat> and feel free. I'm not going to stop you at all, and I'm not going to hate you on it. Go ahead and share this out to anybody else that um, you know you, you feel that might be um, this might help. All right. So I'm just going to check, make sure that everything is going on according to plan. And um, I think it is. Hey, hey, Karen. Everyone, that's my sister in there. Um, I don't know if this is the first time of her watching a Facebook Live of mine, but let me first jump in. I hope everybody's uh, holiday was great. Uh, mine was fantastic. In fact, the birth of my son was on December 27th, so that's why I took a little bit of a break, right? We're Before I jump into it, we are going to be talking about getting in front of more potential clients. And again, I had wanted this series to be continuous, right? Um, and <clears throat> hey Matt, thanks, appreciate that. Um, I wanted this to be a 22 day series, right? Well, hey, life throws us curveballs once in a while and well, my son was born, so I took a break just to, so that I could spend some time with him, my wife, and really start seeing those early moments of my firstborn, right? I wanted to be there and do that. And as a freelancer, that's what my goals were, right? My goals are to be able to have the freedom and flexibility to be with my family when I want to, right? And I've built my business accordingly. So that's what really this whole series of Facebook Live um, to, in 22 ways to automate your freelance business is all about, right? Giving you that the ability to build your business in a way that you have that flexibility to do the things that you want to do, whether that's travel, whether that's to work on specific types of projects or to spend time with family, right? So. Before I get into the, uh, today's topic, I just want to go ahead, um, please feel free. I'd love to see those emojis fly by. Um, you know, hey, everybody loves a newborn, right? So <laughs> go ahead, send those emojis across, um, like this, and feel free to share this out as well. I want to get as many people in here as possible, especially because it's the beginning of the year. Um, and I think that this one, Facebook Live, is poignant to the beginning of the year because when you start planning out your yearly goals oftentimes it's all about getting more projects getting more revenue getting more clients that getting more kind of thing and the fastest way in order to do that is to be able to leverage wider audiences right um, <clears throat> When you start out freelancing, it's usually just you and a bunch of other people that are sending you referrals, right? And that's not a very big wide audience. But there have been more and more people that are in your space that have a similar audience that, that you can cater to, right? And we're gonna to talk today a little bit about how to get in front of those audiences more, okay? I'm just gonna take a sip of water. And if TJ was awake, I'd bring him on the show. Be probably could be the youngest participant in a Facebook Live ever. I don't know, but nonetheless, he is asleep, so I'm not gonna wake a sleeping baby. Um, so here it is: you want to be a guest, right? <clears throat> Getting in front of someone else's audience allows you to cast that wider net, and guest blogging and guest podcasting being a, 
a co-host or a guest on someone else's podcast are just two of the ways to do this, right? And it's not always for everyone, right? Some people like to write, so blogging is appropriate. Some people don't like to write and they'd much rather just be on a mic, so podcast works, right? So the first thing is, is guest blogging is really the lowest hanging fruit especially when it comes into getting out in front of someone's audience, right? There's a lot of content out there on the web. And there's a lot of content websites that need to push out maybe even multiple articles every single day. So they're always looking about um, being able to, you know, <clears throat> build up their audience and satisfy what their audience is craving, right? So, what you want to do is, especially at the beginning of the year, because that's when these websites are starting to plan out their content for the full year, right? They don't plan out next week's content. If it's January 1, they're already planning out everything in quarter 2. That's just how they work, right? So get on their schedule while they're looking for people to get into, looking for content you know, to be able to provide to their audience, right? Just reach out with a simple email and say, hey, I'm looking to, you know, guest blog on, you know, let me rephrase that, right? You want to provide value to them and to their audience, right? So let's say you have a blog post that resonates with your audience, right? And you happen to search on a, on a, other blog with a similar audience do they have an article that's like your successful article right if so maybe there's a way you can take that as a part two article right or maybe if they have similar topics but they haven't hit upon your topic go ahead and introduce yourself and say, hey, I have this article, it's gotten X number of shares, it's gotten X number of hits over a specific period of time. I see that you have a fantastic article about X, Y, and Z, um, and you have other articles that might also fit alongside this one. I'd, I'd be willing to you know, modify this for your audience. If it's a good fit, let me know. And I'll be able to, you know, let's let's set up a time for me to get on your calendar, right? And then that's all you have to do. It's nice and simple, nice and concise, and it's catering to someone with a specific need. Similarly, podcasts are the same, right? Podcasts are, well, they're the accelerator, I like to call them, in the content world, right? Or in the networking world, right? Because... Not everyone likes to do them. Not everyone is comfortable to do them, right? <clears throat> Getting in front of, you know, on a Skype call, hearing people, you know, hearing their voices or maybe getting on a, on a video call is sometimes awkward, right? And, and you're not really sure how all of this is gonna handle, be handled, right? So not everyone does podcasts, but those that do, you start to really get that hockey stick in your networking because a lot of it's a fast and quick way and it's a very intimate way to get in front of an audience right you're you're in their ears for a half an hour 20 minutes or even an hour right um, and they're listening to you answer some questions that the the host is asking of you or you're in some sort of uh, panel discussion where you're giving insights into a specific topic, right? These are things where that audience may or may not have heard of you. And now you're saying things that really resonates with them. And because you're talking with them, because you're talking, it almost seems like you're with them, right? You're with them right in the room. They can hear your inflection. They can hear your tone. And as a result, they feel that deeper connection, right? It's a lot more than just reading words on a screen. Because listen, hey, we've all read articles on Huffington Post and Lifehacker and all of these other content sites. How many of those articles do you know the author to, right? So that's the thing. So <clears throat> that's, those are the two easiest ways, right? 
to get on someone's content calendar right at the first start of the year. Because like blogs do, podcast hosts are also planning ahead, right? If it's January 1, they've already gotten January and maybe even February already recorded and scheduled out. They might be looking for March and April. They might be looking for those kind of content. So <clears throat> get on their calendar while they have those openings. And the final thing, and this is something that not a lot of people are doing, but I am seeing it pop up here and there. And before I get into it, if we could go ahead and uh, share this out. I'd be greatly appreciating, appreciative of it because I want to get as many people in here because I think this final tip is a, a key. It's a it's a, a tactic that freelancers really should be capitalizing on. Um, all right. Yeah, Matt. Matt says that he was doing the same. He was saying the same thing to a client earlier today. I, I, I this was a little earlier on. I guess about guest blogging. Um, complimentary audiences um, will work wonders, and they do, right? So me as a developer, I oftentimes reach out to designers because they have clients that need development work, right? And vice versa, designers reach out to me because they know that, <clears throat> hey, you know, it, it's, it's a service that they need and I need as well. So thanks, Matt. I do appreciate you sharing out that video, uh, this Facebook Live rather, and uh, I appreciate that. So the last thing I want to point out is a lot, not a lot of people are doing this, but I am starting to see hints and, and little blips on the radar that more and more people are starting to capitalize on this and it's webinars and local meetups, right? So yes, you've heard of webinars and you've heard where webinars are, hey, get more clients, right? And it's 40 minutes of, the, of all of the what, the what, the what, right? There's nothing really about exactly how to do it until the very end where they pitch you something, right? What I'm suggesting here is a webinar where it's, you invite clients, leads, past clients, and, and others, right? Anybody that might be interested in this specific topic of, let's say, how do you create a lead magnet on your website to increase sales, right? And it's a free, sort of half hour or 45 minutes where you just give out the information, right? And here's why this works, right? You tell them the tools to use, you may even walk them through how to setting it up and all of that, right? And the reason why this works is because they're not going to do it, right? You're gonna show them screens, you're gonna show them why to do it, you're gonna show them the benefits of, of all of this to do but they're not going to actually go ahead and do it for them. They're going to say, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about, or this girl has the exact steps that I know I need to do, but I just don't have time to do it. I'm going to hire this person. Right? That's why they don't. That's, that's why you, do, you give this free content away. Right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, Matt, I mean, that's, it is. A and hey, <laughs> I'll be honest. I've um I have yet to run a webinar myself of that kind of nature, but you know that it, it that it works. That's why people do it, right? A prop. It uh, Matt, you're, the end of your comment uh, chopped off, but I think I know where you were going with that because yes, a proper content uh, webinar is where you provide value, not just the what but the how also. Um, I understand why they do web. That's why I think webinar, the term webinar is actually starting to become a little bit, you know, negative almost. That's why I would encourage you if you, if you like this idea, um, where you get your clients, leads, past clients, and maybe open it up to the public, call it a workshop. That's all. It's a workshop on how to, how to create a lead magnet. It's a workshop on how to set up your Instagram account, you know, whatever it might be, whatever services that you 
can really that are really low hanging fruit for your clients to do that you do for your clients that's what i would suggest right the other thing too is local meetups right if you have a very localized service and and a localized business right and all your businesses are kind of in the same area s send out some mass email to that area your list maybe post it in the you know common places in town that you know, hey, at the coffee shop on Thursday at 8.15, we're going, I'm going to show you these things. And, you know, you'll get like 6, 10, maybe even 15 people show up. And they're there to interact. Just make it completely open. No pitch, you know. Just, hey, this is what I want to give to you guys because you're in my area. We should meet up. I think I can help you out with your business. Let's do it, right? And just make yourself open for an hour, an hour and a half and allow them to bounce questions off you because they will have questions. And if you can answer those questions, they'll hire you, all right? So again, it's the new year. If you're out pound, pounding the pavement, thinking about your plans, getting more clients, more revenue, whatever that might be, go ahead and start with guest blogging, right? Reach out to some people and it's simple. It's a simple email. Hey, so-and-so. I have an article that might suit your, your <clears throat> actually flip that, right? Hey, so-and-so, I noticed that I love your article on X, right? And I see that you have a number of articles about Y, Z, A, B, and C. I wrote this article about D that I think might fit with your audience. If you think it's a good fit, here's some stats around it, and maybe I can tailor it for your audience. Let me know what you think, right? That's an easy, simple one hit, one hit email that you can send out anytime. Guest podcast, same, similar thing, right? If you're talking about or you, you're providing services to a specific audience, go in iTunes and search for that audience. I guarantee you it's there, right? If you think that there's not a podcast about what you do and your business and where your audience is, you're dead wrong. I've seen podcasts about pet care. I've seen podcasts about vegetable gardens. There's a podcast for everything. Get out there, get in front of your audience by asking a very similar thing to the, the podcast host, right? Much like the blogging. And finally, think about setting up <clears throat> workshops or local meetups where you can invite people, leads, prospects, you know, your clients, and just maybe even open up, up to the public and provide them some 45 minutes of value, right? Real how-to tutorial kind of style thing where you can <clears throat> get questions real time asked to you and you can answer them, all right? So that's all I have. Um, this was uh, 19, right? So we've got three more to go, 20, 21, and 22. Um, and hey, look, I'm excited for this. We're wrapping this series up. I'm going to be putting this up on my YouTube channel as a play, pretty much as a playlist, so you can review these things back if you want to. You don't have to f search through Facebook because I know that can be clunky. Um, and <clears throat> I would encourage you to <clears throat> sorry about that. Two weeks of uh, two and a half weeks of no Facebook Live, scratchy voice. Um, <clears throat> plus twenty two. <laughs> new ones for 2017 right yeah matt hey look i'm going big for you guys in 2017 that's like yes i'll give you a little little brief insight into this 2017 i have <clears throat> set high goals for myself and they're all centered around you guys this month january i'm launching a podcast called live in the feast it's all about trying to help freelancers <clears throat> that are kind of stuck in their ways um, and they've been doing it for some time and they want to level up their game um, it's not an interview show and it's not a topical show it's going to be a hybrid I haven't really heard too much about this but every single season of the podcast will have a, a broader topic and each episode will go into a, a specific topic on in that broad topic. Uh, season one is all about getting clients. Um, <clears throat> I'll also be bringing on people as well. 
freelances that you might have heard of and freelances that I know you never heard of. So, and we're going to hear their stories and their journeys and how it relates to the topic at hand. So that's first, you know, podcast in January, spread the word. Um, <clears throat> also, I'm going to be releasing several other things across the new year where, you know, I'm all about you guys. You guys have told me what you want, what you have struggles with, what you need help on. I'm going to help you do, you know, help you solve those problems and solve those struggles. Get over those hurdles, right? So, Matt, 22? I don't know if there's going to be 22. It might be 44, 66. I don't know. We'll have to see. But there's definitely a lot more coming. Um, if you want to... <laughs> Great transition. Thanks for Matt, um, and you know I'll give you twenty dollars for the segue. If you guys want to know all about that kind of stuff, um, join the Sustainable Freelancer Facebook group. You can go to res.com/facebook, and that'll drop you right into the Facebook group. Um, that's that's where I'll be sharing all of this awesome free content. That's where I'll be telling you about things first. If you're in there, jump in there and 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 let's let's interact you know I would love to be able to do that all right um, hey Jason I hear you're running a podcast I'd like to bring some <laughs> definitely see gold star for Matt right okay I'm gonna give you some emojis okay see he's a hustler all right um, I might reach out now Matt you know let's see what we can talk about um, I am planning out my seasons so if you have something to talk about that you think that you know hey you know, the, my audience would benefit from, let's get in touch, you know, reach out to me, all right? Um, so, that's it for me. Um, I hope everybody's new year has started off with a bang, and uh, until next time, it's your time to feast. <laughs>